Hallelujah. Today we're talking about Jesus' threefold anointing, how that relates to us as a believer. Let's look at uh, Hebrews chapter 9, starting in verse 24. Um, well, let's back up to verse 20. Saying, This is the blood of the, New, of the Testament which God had enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled both the blood and the tabernacle and all the vessels of the, of, of the ministry. And almost all things are, are, are by the law purged with blood. Without the shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices. Now what this is saying is that on the earth, the priests went in and did priestly duties using the blood of bulls and goats and, and sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, and they cleansed heavenly utensils, and the, priest went in, the high priest went in once a year into the Holy of Holies, <clears throat> and he sprinkled the blood on the mercy seat of God. And it says these were patterns of other things, that there were patterns of the heavens. In other words, they were patterns of what had to take place in heaven. Why? Because man's authority went up to, but not including the throne of God. I said not including the throne of God. In other words, he, did not, he was not higher than God himself, but God created man in his likeness, in his image, said let man have dominion. Amen. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? He said, let him subdue the earth, let him have dominion over all the earth. Hallelujah. And that we know that the, that the high priest had to go into the Holy of Holies once a year and sprinkle the mercy seat was a pattern of what Jesus was going to have to do when he took his own blood. Why? Because that's how far sin had tainted. Jesus' blood had to go where man's sin or man's authority had been. And when, man's, when man transferred his authority to Satan, he, he tainted those things of heaven that his authority went to. So it went up to the mercy seat, and so the blood of Jesus had to go all the way up to the mercy seat. What's, what's what we learned from that? That the man's authority went all the way up to that point, but not beyond it. So therefore, everything up to that point had to be cleansed. That's how far man's authority. Why? Because God created man to be an under ruler. Man, got, man was created to be an under ruler. Um, actually, we, we can, we can uh, learn from the scriptures Satan's called the God of this world. Well, when did he become the God of this world? Not when he was cast out of heaven. My goodness, somebody, I was having a discussion with someone recently. They were trying to say that Satan was the God of this world because he was cast out of heaven. Hogwash! God created man with authority, told him to have, to have, have dominion. Yeah. Where did the word, what, what does the word dominion come from? It comes from the king's domain. When you have dominion, you have Rule over a kingdom. Okay? See, kingdom comes from king's domain. Man has to have dominion. You have dominion in a domain. All right? And so man was created in the image of God in his likeness, and he was, he, was, he was invested with authority from God all the way up to, but not including his own throne. Now, God, did, God, would have never, never, God never seized the authority of his throne. All right? But he ceded everything else to the authority of man. Why? He wanted a, he wanted a class of being who could worship him freely and have, have, have a, something to lose or something to gain by not doing it. All right. And so, it was, listen, verse 23 again. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. What? The, pattern, well, the whole temple. All the temple worship was a pattern of the things in heaven. All those things were a pattern, and all the, 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 the ordinances and, and, and rules of the priesthood were patterns of what the Lord Jesus Christ himself was going to do in the real, in the heavens. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands. In other words, Solomon's temple, the earthly tabernacle, the earthly temple, which are figures uh, uh, of the true. In other words, they were types. The earthly tabernacle was a type of heaven. Amen. The holy of holies, you could only enter in once in a year and not without blood. And the, and the entrance was supernatural. The veil of the temple was about six inches thick, hand-woven material, 40 foot uh, tall and 60 foot wide. There was not a curtain that you could just, you know, it's not like these curtains you see in a theater where you go and you find the middle and you kind of pull it back and walk through. It was a solid six inches thick. You just don't go through that. Hello? You don't, you don't pick it up and crawl under either. 
The priest would go, they, they tied a rope to his legs so they could pull him out if he died. <laughs> Hallelujah. If he won't write, you better be right when you go in. Boy, that would, that would change things at church these days, wouldn't it? Boy, we're going to tie a rope for you out there in the parking lot when you go in. If you don't, if you don't come back out on your own, we'll drag you out. We know you won't write with God. Aren't you glad we live under a different covenant? <laughs> Me too. Amen. But I, you know, and now you got all these people out there preaching, you don't have to live holy, you live any way you want to live, and all that crazy stuff. Hallelujah. The Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are figures of the true, but of heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Thank God. Can you say amen? Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then he must often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. As is appointed unto men once to die, that does not mean you have a date. That is the most misrepresented passage of Scripture. One of the, I said, excuse me, one of the most represented passages of Scriptures in the Bible. It's appointed unto man once to die. I got a date. It's not my time. Honey, you don't have a time. You don't have a specified, marked out date that God's got on a calendar, and when it turns, you're out of here. That's just not biblical. And it's appointed unto man wants to die, but after that, the judgment, you're going to die. Why? Because we're, we, we're, we're fallen creatures. Eventually. But he said, with long life, I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And this is the first commandment of the promise. What? That your, days may be long on the, uh, that, uh, that your days may be long on the earth. I forgot the rest of that. I just went totally blank. Amen? That it may be well with thee, and that thy days may be long on the earth. In other words, your actions can shorten the length of your life. Hello? I know we've taught it for decades or centuries. You know, that there's a date. It's appointed on the man wants to die, you know, and I'm just going to go out here and live. I, heard, I had somebody tell me one time, I'm a preacher. Well, I had a ball filled with lightnings coming in everywhere. And he said, I don't know why people are scared. If it's not your time, you're just not going to get it. I'm going to tell you what, that's just crazy. Why don't you just go out there and get you a piece of metal and stick it out there and wave it in the air? If it's not your time, you won't get hit. Hello? Why don't we just walk out here in the interstate during rush hour and stand out in the middle of the street and just stand like this? If you don't get hit, it just wasn't your time. That's foolish. There is not a set date that you're going to die. You can add to or shorten. Hello? That's not what the Scripture says. It's appointed that a man wants to die. I didn't say that it was appointed that a man to die on a certain date. What's that mean? It means is you're in this fallen natural body, and it's eventually going to wear out. And you're going to physically die at some point in time. But what you do and how you handle that body and what you do with that body has, has a tremendous amount with how long or short it lives. You can go out and shoot up every day. Hello? Hit crack every, every night. Carouse. Don't get any sleep. Stay drunk. Amen? Are you here? Go to bar fights all the time. And you wonder why you look 90 when you're 30. you can't. You got to take care of your body. Amen. I said amen. Now, if you, if you take care of yourself, if you live godly, amen, you're not shooting up, not smoking, not snorting. All those things, see, all those, those, uh, those drugs have to wear your body out. So will uh, all you can eat buffets at, at Golden Corral. Three times a week. So I, I, a lot of times I substitute by my kids' former school. And they always show it to, in, in their PE class, uh, one session in ninth grade, or one of the grades, they'll show uh, supersize me. And it's where the guy goes into McDonald's three times a day and eats the biggest meal they got for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it's always supersized. And he does it for 30 days. He gains like 30 pounds. You could come to my house and I could home cook you three meals a day, every day, and supersize it, and you'd gain 30 pounds. Hello? You could go to the health food store and supersize everything, and you're going to gain weight. Hello? It's, 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 a, foul, it's a flawed premise. And, but they use it to say McDonald's is bad food, fast food, or it kill you. Well, sure, anything in that, in that, in, in that. Hello? 
too much water will kill you. One woman thought she was going to have stomach. She had a sister die of stomach cancer, started drinking, I think, four or five gallons of water a day, and it killed her. Just water. Just drinking too much water killed her. She drowned herself because her body couldn't get rid of the water. She, she drowned internally. All right? Well, it was her time. Ain't your time. Hello? He said, he said three score and ten, and by reason of strength, four, four score, that's 70 or 80 at least. Now, listen, that's, that's a ten-year window there just in the Old Testament. So it can't be there's a set time. When you turn 70, you die. When you turn 80, you die. Or any time, you've got to die. No, this, is talk, this scripture is talking about, and I don't have time to keep dealing with, you know, but, but I got on it, so I got to take care of it. Do not, don't, don't live your life, well, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die. That's just, that, that, that's, that's crazy. Why don't you just go jump out of an airplane without a parachute and say, if I don't die, it wasn't my time. Hello? Well, the Lord wants me to live, I'll live. Well, yeah, but you know, don't tempt the, don't tempt the Lord. Remember that Jesus was on the pinnacle of the temple and Satan tried to get him to cast himself down. He, <coughs> he said, the angels are bare of the end. Jesus said, yeah, but it says don't tempt the Lord your God either. Hello? I mean, if it wasn't Jesus' time to go, why didn't he just jump off? Hello? I know these things getting ingrained in us by grandma or great-grandma. Listen, my grandma used to tell me, I grew up in holiness, Pentecostal holiness. And I love my Pentecostal roots. But she would say, now you need to be rooted and grounded in holiness. And I didn't, I never corrected her. But I always, my grandma, it says be rooted and grounded in love. Didn't say anything about the Pentecostal holiness handbook. That's what she would always tell me. You've got to be rooted and grounded in holiness. Well, I understand. You know, look, I love Grandma. You know, love my heritage. You know, that's, I, people say I'm weird because I got a word of faith with a Pentecostal flair to it. You know, praise God. I like that. I like being different. Amen? But, you know, you, you know it's appointed that a man wants to die, and after this, the judgment does not mean that, you know, it don't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you do do or don't do. You're going to die on your date, and that's just the way it is. That's misinterpretation. All that was for free. Hallelujah. As is appointed, a man wants to die, men wants to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was offered, was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Okay, let's get into this. There are, there are threefold anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Under the old covenant, only three groups of people were anointed. The prophet, the priest, and the king, the prophet, the priest, and the king. That's why that the, 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 the children of Israel had to go to the priest to get things taken care of. They had to go to the prophet to hear from heaven. The prophet had to speak. Why? They didn't have the Spirit of God in them. Amen? They did not have the Holy Ghost in them. Y'all hear you go home. And then the king. <clears throat> so the prophet would speak by inspiration of God. The priest would stand between the people and God. And then the king would rule over the people. Jesus had all three anointings on him. It says here in verse 24, For better to heaven now to appear in the presence of God for us, that is his priestly ministry. Jesus Christ today is operating not in the office of prophet or not even really in the office of king. He is operating in the, the ministry of our high priest and apostle of our faith. Amen. Study it out. He oversees your confession. Hallelujah. He argues your case when you come before the Father. Amen? Read John, 1 John 1 and 2. Amen? Glory to God. That, you know, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Glory to God. Can you say amen? We have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Hallelujah. I, I, I love Hebrews chapter 9. But he entered in once and for all with his own blood to obtain an eternal redemption for us. Can somebody shout glory? Hallelujah. That's enough to make you preach. I mean, it, it, it'll, make, it'll make a person who's been, who's been baptized in vinegar and frozen preach. Hallelujah. He entered in not once, I mean, not, not with the blood of bulls and of goats or the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, but he entered in once and for all with his own blood. Hallelujah. What? To obtain an eternal redemption for us. He didn't have to go back and do it again. Now, that doesn't mean you can't mess it up on your end. It means he don't have to go back and do it again. Amen. Hallelujah. And so he appeared now as a priest. Now, now, his ministry now is as a priest. Look down at verse 26 near the end of that. But now once in the end of the world, he hath appeared. He appeared as a prophet. 
He says in um, Matthew 13, 57, And they were all offended at him, but Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save or except in his own country and in his own house. Jesus came, speaking by the oracles of God, speaking by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God, I tell you, he was anointed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. But he was God. He didn't need, oh, no. And he, he stripped himself, in Philippians chapter 4 says, of his rights to deity and to glory. And he walked among us as a man. Hallelujah. When did he get anointed? In the river Jordan when he came to John, when John was baptizing, and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he came up to John, and John says, I have need of the baptism you've got. What? See, John said, There's one who comes after me who's mightier than I. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. And he saw Jesus a coming. And he thought, Whoa, glory. That God, there he is, the one that I spoke of. He's going to baptize people with the Holy Ghost and fire. And John said, I want it. But Jesus said, we must fulfill the plan of God. He, he says righteousness, but he must fulfill the plan of God. That's what he was saying. Hallelujah. So go ahead and do what I'm asking you to do. And the, the Bible says that he suffered him in the King James. Suffer means to allow in that, that era of Elizabethan English, all right? <laughs> so he suffered him or he allowed he, he went ahead and followed the plan of Jesus and he was baptized in the river hallelujah by John the Baptist and then the heavens opened up and he saw a dove descending on him on, from heaven and sat upon him and heard a voice that said here is my son hallelujah in whom I am well pleased glory to God I want you to know glory to God that Jesus was baptized I mean Jesus was, was anointed by the Holy Ghost hallelujah and then he went out into the desert was tempted of the devil hallelujah for 40 days and then he went and then he came out of that, that desert and then he got, got to the temple and he took the scroll and he found what was written in Luke the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me yeah, yeah. hallelujah now, when, you know, I love that passage in Luke chapter 4 he went in the Bible says he went into the desert full of the Holy Ghost the Bible says he came out in the power of the spirit yeah. he, put his, he put the anointing to the test and proved himself and then he came out hallelujah even Jesus proved himself amen I said even Jesus proved himself. And he overcame the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And then when he came out, the Bible says he came out being in the power of the Spirit. Glory to God. Took the Bible, opened it up, and said the Spirit of God's on me. Hallelujah. Because he's anointed me. Hallelujah. And he began to minister prophetically by the Holy Ghost and declare all kinds of things about the coming church age. Hallelujah. He told them right near the end, he said, destroy this temple in three days. I'll raise it right back up. Glory to God. They were so, they're so spiritually blind, they thought I was talking about Solomon's temple. He was talking about the temple of his body. Glory to God. He was prophesying things, talking about, he said, in that day, you'll ask me nothing, but the Father, hallelujah, he loveth you. Whatever you ask him in my name, he'll do it. Glory to God. So he's speaking, and he's ministering prophetically to the church. In what? In his, see, he's not ministering in the office of a prophet now. That was his earthly ministry. His earthly ministry was the ministry of the prophet. Y'all hear you going home. The Bible clearly says now he's ministering as the high priest. He's in his priestly ministry. He, now, look, he's coming in his kingdom ministry. He's not even operating in his kingdom ministry right now. He's op he operated on the earth in his prophet ministry. And so when we study that, we look at that, we see what he did. We see how he spoke. We see the declarations he made, glory to God. By unction of the Spirit. Well, he had, he's God. He can say what he wants to say on his own. He said, I only do those things which I see my Father do. Hello? That's what Jesus said. Jesus was the one who was making sure that everybody understood, I'm not doing this on my own. I came not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. I am a reflection. I'm an outraying. I'm an outshining of the will of the Father on the earth. Glory to God. Woo! Glory. I said glory. So I, like, I challenge people. Go find me where Jesus made folks sick. Go find where Jesus killed people. Go find it where he, he refused to heal people. The closest thing we got is the woman whose daughter lies home be, grievously vexed of a devil. And he said, it's not meat to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. And she said, yeah, Lord, but even the dogs get the crumbs. He said, woman, your faith is great. Get it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And she got it. I said, she got it. Why? She wasn't a covenant person, but she, she had enough faith to get into the covenant, and she wasn't even in it. 
<laughs> Two things made Jesus marvel. The children of Israel's unbelief, because they had the right to it by covenant, and, the, and, and, and then the uh, centurion's faith, who was outside the covenant, and he believed anyway and still got it. He marveled at two things, unbelief by covenant people and faith of non-covenant people. Hello? Now, Jesus operated as a prophet during his earthly ministry, and he ministered supernaturally. The gifts of the Spirit operated through Jesus. Miracles, signs, and wonders operated through him. He spoke prophetically, glory to God, by the unction of the Holy Ghost. On his earthly ministry, establishing the coming kingdom, praise God. Putting things in the force and things in the motion. There were going to trans there was going to be the uh, the transition between the old covenant of the law and the in the eternal uh, and of the earthly priesthood. Where men stood between God and man. Where ordinances stood between God and man. Where rituals stood between God and man. Hallelujah. Now, look, when you start reading about the law in the New Testament, it's talking about, that's what it's talking about. It ain't talking about New Testament commandments or scriptures that tell you you can't live with somebody else's wife. That ain't what it's talking about when it says law. It's talking about the Old Testament Levitical law, the Mosaic law, that which God gave, Ma, uh, God gave Moses in Mount Sinai. The Ten Commandments was ten of them. I'll be honest with you. There's nothing wrong with the Ten Commandments. Now, if you think you're going to get saved because you follow the Ten Commandments, that's something wrong. But there's some pretty good ordinances in there. Well, I'm not under law. Then why don't you just start using God's name in vain all the time then? That's under the law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Well, why don't you go get your Buddha and put it up on your shelf in your living room because the Bible says y'all should have no other gods before me. And look, you're not under that. You're under grace. Put it up there and worship the Buddha. It's okay. You're under grace. You're going to heaven no matter what anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Now, listen. I, 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 why don't you just run over there and grab your neighbor's wife and say she's mine? Now, listen. Please make sure that all your arrangements are taken care of before you do that, that I won't have, have a real hard job. I won't have to do a lot. All right? Because we were burying you. How do you know? I know your wife. I know, she's like my wife. I know what she's going to do. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 my. Where was it before I got off on all that? How did I get to the ABCs of faith? That's not my sermon. I didn't touch buttons and change my whole sermon. Glory. There we are. Hallelujah. Jesus is the prophet preached by us of the Holy Ghost in his earthly ministry. He was, he, was, he was in the transition between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. He was in that place where he, he came to, to, to bridge between where God says, you know, in the, there's a day coming that my law won't be in, the, in, in tables of stone. But I'm going to take and I'm going to write them in your hearts and in your minds. And I'm going to be your God and you're going to be my people, praise God. Jesus was in his prophet's ministry was that transitional ministry between that up until he went to the cross. Hallelujah. And so he ministered on the earth as a prophet. It relates to us this way. He transitioned out of the old into the new. He was that transition period in that earthly ministry, establishing the will and the purpose of God. When you want to know if, Jesus, if God wants to heal you, go look and see what Jesus did. Is it God's will to heal? Well, I check out Jesus' ministry. He said that he was the will of the Father. I need me a choir up here. I need little, little, little bobbleheads up here that we can make their heads go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or either big screen TV up there with bobbleheads on them, and we got them all some kind of computer graphic without bobbleheading when I want them to. Amen. Because y'all get quiet on me. <clears throat> Amen. Jesus came, it came on the earth as that prophet to be the transition between the old and the new, to establish the new covenant, to establish the church, glory to God. He, and he ministered supernaturally. There were things under the old covenant that were no longer, that were no longer relevant. Eye for eye and a tooth for tooth, but I say unto you, love thy neighbor. See, he, by, by unction of the Holy Ghost, by hearing what the Father was saying, he was saying, you know, you know, we had to have the law in the Old Testament just to keep you in check. Those things were there to keep you in check. Now it's not, you know, so we had to, we had to control mankind through the flesh because man didn't have the Spirit in him. But there's a new day coming. Ooh, hallelujah. The prophet was speaking. There's a new day coming. Amen. 
Hallelujah. And he was, he, was, he, and he, was, he, he was demonstrating Ezekiel that in the day that's coming, hallelujah, it won't be the law on tables of stone. But it'll be a law written in your hearts when you're born again and written in your minds by the Spirit of God, hallelujah. And the law of love will supersede don't an eye for an eye and tooth for tooth. You know, love thy neighbor. Do good then that despitefully use you. Amen? Render good for evil. Hallelujah. Amen. He's talking about that, that there's going to be a change in the believer, praise God. There's going to be a change in how things are done in the earth. Not that the law was wrong. The Bible says it was good. Read your Bible. The law was good. But it was there to keep us in check until a greater law could come and operate in us. Let me say this. If you don't operate from that law, you're going to be in trouble. Because you know, if, you if you're not going to operate in the new law and you, if you reject operating in the old law, then you're lawless. That's great, I'm under grace. No, 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 no. You either got to be in the law of love, the old covenant law, or you're lawless. Go ahead, shoot me. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Get out your, your, your all right. Are y'all here? You're going home. I'm under grace. No, 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 no. You have, you have an obedience to, to the God's, law, God's commandment of law of love. See, the law of love says you won't, you won't steal from your neighbor. The law of love, are you here, says you won't covet your neighbor's wife. The law of love says you won't use the name of the Lord thy God in vain. The, see, it's all, remember, remember when, the, when the, Jesus talked to the guy, he came to him and, he said, and Jesus says, well, well, how do you read the law? How do you read the prophets? He said, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. Thy neighbor as thyself. He said, you have well said, you lack one thing. So you got most people got a lot of people going around preaching just the two things. Oh, I just gotta love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, and strength, and my neighbors and myself. He said, Yeah, now go sell everything you got and come follow me. That's what he said. And he went away saddened because he had much goods. How hard is it for them with great riches to enter into the kingdom? And what is the first question the disciples said? Who can get in then? I kind of got a feeling they had some money. Because they wouldn't have been upset if they, oh, yeah, that's right, them rich folks ain't going to make it in. We're going to make it in because we're poor. They're like, hey, who can? Amen. <laughs> With God, things, all things are possible. Boy, the change of the heart. So Jesus is earth. No, it ain't. Ain't no way. Did y'all mess with that clock? There ain't no way. It's it is no way. No, it ain't. The devil's a lie. The devil's a lie. No, no, it ain't 12 o'clock. The devil's a lie. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Help me. <laughs> Just a lie. Just a lie. Y'all put your cell phones on central time. <laughs> I'm just warming up. Hallelujah. I'm just getting a going. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Jesus walked on the earth prophetically in the gifts of the Spirit. He went round about their villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness among the people. Why? Because God was with him, praise God. Hallelujah. And within that transitional period, when he began to establish how the new kingdom was going to work, glory to God, it was going to be a supernatural kingdom, glory to God. He sent the disciples out, told them to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. It's a supernatural church coming. It's a supernatural kingdom coming, glory to God. And that's what he desires of us. Hallelujah. He established that as our, as our prophet, as the one who walked in the spirit, the one who walked in the supernatural, who walked by the, uh, by the counsel of the Holy Ghost. Amen. See, we're supposed to do what he sees. He, we, we see him do now. Just like he only did those things he saw his father do, we only do those things which we see him do. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is our ministry example on the earth. Amen. We've got so much of the church who don't believe that God does anything anymore. Well, he don't heal. I don't, I'm them people who have those, those Holy Ghost meetings, they're of the devil. Really? Like one guy said one time, he, he said, I noticed that all them folks in those churches where they're jumping and shouting and praising God, he said they're closer to God, got a better testimony, love the Lord. Amen. <coughs> See, when you've got a real move of the Spirit, It'll draw you out of the world. 
to the presence of the Holy Ghost on you. Ooh, glory to God. I said the presence of the Holy Ghost on you. Glory to God. I said the presence. Of, yeah, I know we got the Holy Ghost. We, see, we get the Spirit within and the Spirit upon. We get, we, we get both. And I'm going to tell you something. We need to stir up the Spirit within, and we need the, the manifestation of the Spirit upon. But I'm going to tell you something. You get into the presence of God, and that, that's those, those times of refreshing. And you get into the presence of God where, those, where the manifestation of the Spirit is. And I'm going to tell you what, it's hard to go sin. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's hard when God's manifesting himself. Look across the room at another woman and say, Ooh, I'd like to take her out tonight. You're scared you're going to drop dead. Because it's sin. God's manifested. And here's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yeah, like Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus' ministry was supernatural. So it relates to us in this way as the church, the body of Christ, is to be doing what Jesus did. He, gave, he ascended up on high, amen, and led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And he goes on and talks about the ministry gifts, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, amen. But then, then Corinthians comes back and starts talking about uh, be not ignorant of spiritual things. Now, King James says, uh, brethren, concerning concerning." Um, Concerning, <laughs> concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now, gifts is italicized because it's not in the Greek. The Hebrew, the, the, the Greek word there, spiritual, is literally plural. It says, now concerning spirituals, literally translate things other than pertaining to the Holy Ghost. I wouldn't have you ignorant. And then he goes on and starts talking about the nine, what we refer to as the nine gifts or nine, nine manifestations of the Spirit. They are divided severally to every man as he wills. As he wills, not as we will, as he wills. He wants to use the church. To, the church as a whole should be accomplishing. A, listen, this, Jesus said this. Ed Taylor did not say this. Jesus said, the works that I do shall ye do. Let's just stop there. That's pretty big. I said, that's pretty big. John got ready to conclude his gospel, and he said this. He said, if I wrote down everything that Jesus did, I think the world itself couldn't hold all the volumes of book that it would take. We just got a little snippet of it in the four gospels. He said, if everything was written down, the world could not contain the volumes of books. And Jesus said, the works that I do shall ye do also. He didn't stop there. And greater than these shall ye do. Because I go into the Father. And there's been countless discussions. That's a nice way of saying arguments. Over whether he meant greater in quantity or greater in what. Let me put it like this. It don't matter. If we just kind of, Brother Hagin has a series, that has an old series, if you can go find it, called Doing the Works of Jesus. He says, now the Bible says we're supposed to do greater works than these. We don't have the church doing the works. We hadn't even gotten to the greater works. Hello? If we just get to doing the works, we'd be good. Up. We'd be better off. Y'all hear you going home. And so he said, these works that I do shall ye do and greater because I go unto the Father. See, Jesus was our example. The church as a whole should be walking in the, the, the ministry that Jesus walked in when he was on the earth. Teaching, preaching, healing, casting out devils, raising the dead. Signs, wonders, miracles. And we see it in the very beginning. And, the, and they went everywhere preaching, preaching the Lord working with them, confirming the word, signs following. They were casting out devils. They were raising the dead. They were healing the sick. Amen. The church has got to get back to, to walking that prophetic. Now, listen, don't get weirded out. Don't go ahead here and say, oh, we're all prophets. That's not what I'm saying. But Jesus walked in a prophetic anointing in his earthly ministry where he demonstrated the coming kingdom. He was a foreshadowing of the coming kingdom. And the church should be doing the same thing for the, come, the establishing of the coming kingdom. Where we should be a supernatural church. 
Now, don't get weirded out. We're not going to start laying hands on you and sending anybody else prophets. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about uh, we're using some typology here. That's what Jesus was. He was a prophet, and his, his ministry was, was a foreshadow of the coming kingdom. The church is supposed to be carrying forth. Remember, remember Luke? <laughs> Look, I can't quit. You're just going to stay with me. Now, if you've got to go to the bathroom, we've got speakers in there, go. All right? <laughs> that made me lose my thought. Luke starts out the book of Acts. Look over there. Put Acts chapter 1 up. The former treaties have I, now that's Luke, that's what he, the former thing he wrote to him. I made O Theophilus of all, listen to this, that Jesus did. Is that what it says? It didn't say all that Jesus did and taught. It's just all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Why didn't it say do and taught or did and taught? Because the church was to carry it on. The church was to pick up where Jesus left off and carry it forward and be imitators of God as dear children. We are his body in the earth. We're supposed to be carrying forth of that same kind of anointing. Hallelujah. Oh, my. That's why Jesus told the disciples, don't you leave here. Don't you go do anything. You get to Jerusalem and you stay there until what? Until you be endued with power from on high. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you should be witnesses to me in Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Why? You're not equipped to go do it the way Jesus did it until you get the Holy Ghost. Well, when I get born again, I get all the Holy Ghost I'm going to get. We don't have time for that lesson. But I can tell you, I can give you five scriptures that will nail you to the wall and you're done. And not trying to be cocky or arrogant. I'm telling you, you believe the lie. I'm telling you, there's too many scriptures in the Bible that show that they were saved and later got filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues. There's too much in the Bible about it. Too much in the book of Acts. <clears throat> that passed away the day the last apostle died. Hogwash. I said hogwash. can't take 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and manipulate it like that. That's just manipulation of the scripture. When that which is perfect is coming. Canonized the scripture is that which is perfect. He said in the day that happens, we'll know even as we're known. How many of you know God like he knows you? Raise your hand. Anybody out there, raise your hand if you know God like he knows you. Can't be talking about right now. Can't be talking about because we got a Bible. It's talking about the day that Jesus appears. It says when he appears, we should be like him for we should see him as he is. That's what the Bible says. So the Bible tells us when the day is coming that we won't need tongues and interpretation of tongues. Why? When he reappears. We'll say, oh, that's Jesus. Whoa, we'll step right over into that glorified state. Hallelujah. And I've got to wrap it up, don't I? But you know what? I'm just warming up. I'm just warming up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to know that we're called to a supernatural ministry and a supernatural, I'm talking about the church as a whole. Faith and Victory Church, yes, but the whole church as a whole is called to imitate and emulate the Lord Jesus Christ. We're to go out in power. But you know what Paul said one time? He said this. He said, I came unto you not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. It's time we get rid of Mickey Mouse sermons and wimpy teaching and have people follow the Holy Ghost and faith, glory to God, who preach under the anointing of God that set the captives free, that heal the sick, that deliver the bound, glory to God, with something you can't make up. You can't psychosomatically change them. They've come in contact with the great God Almighty, and he has delivered them by his power. Glory to God. There's a whole crowd of people following Jesus one day, and they're all touching him because they've heard he's the guy. He's the one with the message. Oh, he's so cute when he ministers. Come on now. Stargazing. Hello. He was walking, the Bible says, and the multitude thronged him. But here came a woman. But there was a woman with an issue of blood, who had suffered many things of many physicians. 
who came behind him in the press and touched him. For she said, if I can touch but the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. Ooh. Now the Greek says she said and kept on saying. You know what she was supposed to be saying? When she got up out of it, she said, the Bible says she heard of Jesus. When she got up, walked out of her house and saw people, she was supposed to be saying, unclean, unclean, so they could get away from her. That was a, that was a law. If they caught her in the streets that day, without doing that, they would have stoned her to death. She won't cry unclean. She was crying out, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. And she got there, and there's a press, there's a crowd, they're thronging around him. Now listen, she touched the hem of his garment. I'll tell you why she did. She had to crawl in. She couldn't get in any other way. She touched the hem of his garment, and the Bible says, Jesus immediately knowing virtue went out of him. We're not getting people to the point where they're releasing their faith, where they're touching the master. We've got people going around saying things like, well, God chose not to heal them. Hogwash! They didn't touch his garment in faith. Amen. There are people touching him who didn't get healed. There are people grabbing him who just touched him with curiosity. There were hope souls there. Well, I hope if I go over there, I'll get something. Maybe if I go over there, he's got something for me today. No, but there's one woman that showed up. Ooh, Hallelujah. And she reached in there and touched the hem of his garment. Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? Because he knew himself that virtue went out of him. Hallelujah. And his lead, his lead communications director came up to him and put his hand and said, Now, Lord, Master, thou seest the multitude thronging thee. But, uh, I know you didn't get to sleep last night. <laughs> and, say, and you're saying, who touched me? Now, here's the implication. Jesus, everybody's touching you. You got to, I, I just can see his face. It had to be, they'll get it one day, I know. One of the days they're going to get it. But this ain't the day. And so he just stood there. And then the woman came, fearing get trembling, fell down before. Wow, see, now she's going to be exposed. She's out there. She's not supposed to be out there. And they know who she is. If you've suffered 12 years, many things in many positions, they all know who you are. Hello? Fell down and told them all the truth. He stepped back up. He said, Woman, I am Yeshua HaMashiach. I am the Son of God. I have healed your body out of my mercy and grace just because I chose to do it today. That's not what he said. The daughter of thy faith have made thee whole. Go and behold thy plague. He said, it didn't have a thing to do with whether God chose to heal her that day or not. It had to do with her faith making contact with what was already there. There was a certain day they went to a house, Peter's house, her mother-in-law house. And the Pharisees and the doctors of the law from all about were there, seated there. You know what the Bible says? And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. How do you know it was there? Jesus was there. I'm, I'm just going to jump to the end of the story. None of them got healed. Not one of them. As a matter of fact, the only person that got healed was a guy on a stretcher. They came up, found a house full, climbed up on the roof, ripped the roof off, dropped them down in between, and Jesus said, thy sins be forgiven thee. That, that upset them. <laughs> Who can say that they forgive sins except God alone? And Jesus looks at him and says, did you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to heal, to, to uh, forgive sins? He saith unto the sick of the palsy, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And he got him walked off. Why? Same sacrifice, same power, different results. One gains forgiveness of sin, one heals the body. It was the same sacrifice. But none of those doctors of the law or the Pharisees from all the towns around about got healed. As a matter of fact, they thought, We've seen strange things today. The man has been crippled his whole life. He's walking, and all you can do is, we've seen strange things today. That's the best you can come up with. And since so they were amazed, and they glorified God, feel free, we've seen strange Yeah. You know, it probably went like this. Well, uh, praise the Lord. That was strange. Bozo! God's 
trying to tell you something. If you reach out by faith. And see, and Jesus being the prophet and the, and the forerunner and the type for the church, we're supposed to be doing the same thing. That when people come into our presence as a believer, the power of the Lord's present to heal them. Well, I don't know about that preacher. They shall lay hands on the sick. These signs shall follow them that believe. Do I, if you're a believer, please raise your hand. Okay. All right, got 100% in here. These signs shall follow them that believe. So guess what's supposed to follow you? These signs. In my name. These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. They'll drink any of the other thing that shall not harm them. Are you here? They'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The reason the world isn't getting help from the church is because the church don't believe the Bible. We don't believe it. How do we expect to get it to them? <clears throat> if we don't believe it, if we're going around telling people that God doesn't heal, if we're going around telling people that God isn't doing that anymore, if we're going around telling people that God's not interested in that anymore, he just wants to get people into heaven, you know, so come up and shake the preacher's hand or, you know, let's, let's, let's do come down and kind of gimmick to get them in the door and make them feel good like they're going to get to heaven. I, listen, like somebody, somebody said the other day, people preaching out here and they're trying to tell people they're not going to have any troubles or whatever, and, you know, and, um, you know, so he said this, I'd rather have a tough journey on earth and go to heaven than have a smooth journey and go to hell. Now, I understand we say it. We're teaching people they're not going to face anything. That if you'll come into the church and you'll come to our kind of church, you know, you, you're not going to be offended because we, we're not going to let the Holy Ghost work on Sunday morning because it might offend somebody. Tongues might offend the mayor. The mayor might need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you here or are you gone home? The, mayor might be the, the mayor's wife might be dying of terminal cancer and all the doctors will say she's got three months. He don't need a feel-good sermon. He needs somebody that came not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that their faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I'm calling you out, church. I said, I'm calling you out. That's not Pastor Ed's job, it's your job. You're supposed to be laying hands on people at work. Janie's praying over people all the time. She's, 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 she's being a little covert because, you know, working for the state. They're, they're, they're crazy. They're full of devils. Now, all of our state institutions are full of devils, people full of the devil. Our school, our, your kids are going to school, people, people full of the devil. Administrators and principals and are full of the devil. Your school, your city councils are full of the devil. Amen. You better start voting godly and stop voting for your personal wants. <clears throat> Amen. Pray for those in office, but vote godly. If they believe in abortion, if they believe in killing babies, if they believe in, uh, you know, homosexual marriage, if they believe in, you know, that you know, they believe in evolution, your kids shouldn't be taught anything but evolution, they're of the devil. And they don't need to be in office. Amen. Are you here? And our churches have been infiltrated with this mindset of the world. But we're going to rise up because I'm calling you out. We're going to walk in the transitional ministry that Jesus demonstrated us. We're going, he transitioned from the Old Testament law. He transitioned to where every believer had the anointing. And we're going to get into some of this tonight. If I don't get into this morning because I'm not done, I can't quit. We're, we're going to get into where the anointing of God walks out of the believer. And we do just like Jesus did. And you start reading about the apostles in the church. And you read about deacons. Man, you couldn't even be a deacon unless you were filled with the Holy Ghost and faith. Now most churches have deacons because they because they got a business. You go to your Bible, the first seven deacons, the, the apostles came and said, you choose out seven men among you, from among you full of faith and the Holy Ghost and let them take care of feeding the widows. Yeah. Deacons didn't run the church, they fed widows. That's Bible. We think they're supposed to vote whether the pastor stays or not. What, what sermon he's preaching this week, how much he's supposed to make. Come on. Are you here? Go home. Whether or not he's he going to let the pastor build that new extension on the building or not. Because the deacon board said no. Well, are you full of faith in the Holy Ghost? No, then you don't need to be a deacon. I'm calling you out. We're going to lay hands on the sick. We're going to cast out devils. 
you're going to minister to people because you've got your anointed. Listen, I can't get there by you come in contact with. You come in contact with people all the time who have needs. And when you show up and they're sick, I'm going to tell you something. Let this ring in your ears. When you show up as a believer and they're sick, the power of the Lord is present to heal them. Well, I don't have a healing that you're anointed because you're a believer. He said, you'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, I thank God for the gifts of healings and the, the manifestations, but I'm telling you, when you show up with somebody sick, the power of the Lord is present to heal them because you're a believer. Some of you are going, oh, bah, 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 but what if they don't get healed? I said, the Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Yeah. These signs will follow them that believe. You better stop, wor stop worrying about it not happening and start getting into the Bible until you believe it will happen. Amen. Amen. Uh, Jesse's fiance went out on the mission trip for Ramah to the Navajo Indian Reservation. He laid hands on somebody and instantly got healed. I went down a week and a half ago down to another church and had about eight, nine people come up by the word of knowledge of different things and instantly healed. I mean, just stuff that happened instantly. Not getting better as they went, not feeling a little bit better. I mean, instantly healed. Man, I mean, they could do stuff they couldn't do. How to instantly healed. Glory to God. Amen. We got to get busy. Amen. We got to walk in that anointing. And it, it, it relates, Jesus' prophetic anointing on the earth, his supernatural ministry anointing relates to us in that's how we're to conduct ourselves as a believer. And you're not going around getting that. You, Jesus didn't walk around and give people words all the time. Some people think we're supposed to go prophesy over everybody all the time. We're supposed to be their Holy Ghost. No, they're led by the Spirit. We're supposed to have a supernatural church that ministers life by the power of the Spirit. Amen. Amen.